Hey everyone, Matt here, back at it again with another Next Base dash camera review. This time we're looking at the 322 GW. This one is a step up from the Next Base 222 that I just reviewed because uh, not only does it have localized Wi Fi, but it also has the ability to uh, view your footage through an app. And in addition, the 322 and above support this uh, cabin view camera as well. So for those of you that are, uh, for example, Uber drivers, or those of you that want to view inside of your vehicle, you can hook this up with a click uh, onto your dash cam and you can um, film from inside your cabin as well. So with all next space dash cameras, it's recommended you, you charge for two hours before you actually put it in your vehicle. Got my quick start guide, my decal there. So this is the camera itself. So if you watched my last next space, um, my last next space review, or if you've uh, seen a next space camera, it uh, hooks in through a magnetic mount. So there's a magnetic mount that um, you sit your camera to like this, and then got your little ports for your uh, micro SD card. It is recommended that you have a micro SD card that's about. 32 gigs or above. Um, it uh, this this camera this particular camera doesn't come with one, but um, you can get one at Best Buy or you can buy the Next Base um, accessory pack, and the accessory pack comes with a 32 gig uh, micro SD card. So here are some of the other hookups that are included. This is the the power itself. This is uh, to help you hide your wires. That's a charge cable. This is the magnetic suction cup mount. So um, behind the, um, actually I'm going to pull the mount out first before I start talking about it. So this is the magnetic click and go mount. And if you pull this adhesive off, there's a couple screws that will attach to this so that you can attach your uh, dash cam to uh, by suction cup instead of adhesive to your windscreen. It's really just a matter of preference. I actually prefer the adhesive myself. And so there's a quick look at the camera and uh, this one uh, also has a touch, uh, excuse me, a touch screen. So that'll be good as well. So I'm just gonna go and charge it and then uh, get it set up. Let's look at some of the recording options here. So this is a full touch screen, and that means that you can cycle through a few different things here, whether you wanna set timestamps or speed stamps or GPS stamps, a model stamp, resolution. So right now I have it set to 1080p and 30 frames per second. Uh, you can go 720p, 60 frames a second. and 60 frames a second for 1080p as well, as well as 30 frames a second for 720p. Um, so I've been recording mainly in 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second with 1080p. Throughout all of this, you can set uh, video length, um, exposure and audio settings. Your longest continuous loop that you can have is three minutes. And for the purpose of doing any reviews, I do try to set it to the longest um, loop as well. And there's the G sensors, driver assistance. The G sensor on this is a lot less uh, sensitive than the Nextbase 222. So with the 222, if you watch that video, one of the difficulties I had was that um, the the G sensor in intelligent parking mode would basically come on at the drop of a hat if I were to close the door. Basically, didn't have that problem at all here. So you can set alerts, you can change your time zone, your language, and uh, you can set it to miles or kilometers per hour and things like that as well. Let's quickly look at how we can view footage. So viewing footage is done in a couple of different ways. There is the Nextbase Player app, which is uh, on your PC or your Mac, which is when you can pull the micro SD card out, put it into a card reader, and then um, view your footage directly from there. There's the My Nextbase Player app as well, which connects through local, uh, lo a local Wi-Fi connection, which means that you can use your phone to uh, view your videos, download your videos, or send them to an insurance adjuster uh, if you need to. And then there's also directly off the uh, the dash cam itself. So when you press the little play button like this, you'll see that you can get a full clear view of what you've, uh, what you've just recorded. 
what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna shift it over to uh, video footage that I've pulled off the dash cam as I talk about some of the other features of the camera itself. Let's take this for a drive both day and night. During this day drive, I'm gonna showcase the 1080p mode at 60 frames per second. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. By default, it films at 30 frames per second, but as you saw earlier on, you can change that. 1080p at 60 frames per second captures at about 160 megs per minute, while 30 frames is about 130, so choose your memory card wisely. I was using a 32 gigabyte card that Nextbase provided me with this review, and as you can see, it fills up rather quickly. This is only after a couple hours on the road. This display is actually in the My Nextbase Connect mobile app. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the amazing features that come on board this camera. You get a 140 degree wide field of vision, a very precise GPS, and emergency SOS. Emergency SOS is a feature exclusive to Nextbase, and it does a couple things. It'll allow you to summon emergency help directly through the app as long as you've allowed it to track location, and if you're in an accident and the camera senses you're unconscious, it'll automatically summon emergency service. Thankfully, this isn't a feature I had to test during this review. As can be expected, this camera does come with intelligent parking mode through its onboard G-Sensor. When I reviewed the Nextbase 222, I felt like the G-Sensor was too sensitive and would trigger too easily. At its default setting, the G-Sensor behaves much better on this camera, and the only time that I triggered it was when I was pulling the camera off its mount while it was on. Considering how strong that magnet base is, it didn't surprise me. Let's get mobile. There's a really cool mobile optimization feature that exists within this camera. When you're driving around, it's actually capturing two videos, one video in high res and another in a lower res. The latter is for you to quickly look at video footage in the My Nextbase Connect mobile app. I do love my dash cam mobile apps, as you know, but don't like how long it takes to download a video from the localized connection. Nextbase deals with my gripes by letting you view the low res video, and if you like it, grab the high res video and save for later. I'm about to flip the switch on this video in high res, and start playing it in low res. This is what the low res video looks like, and it's less than a tenth of the size of high res. So basically, instead of downloading a 481 meg, three minute continuous loop that plays in 1080p at 60 frames a second, you just download a 41 meg one and watch that, and if you like it, then you can download the high res video and save it. The My Next Base Connect app also allows you to do cool things like send a video directly to your insurance adjuster, apply firmware updates, and make changes to your camera settings through the low energy Bluetooth connection. This is also how your camera will initially sync up GPS coordinates. As I was going through all my video footage, I realized I had the GPS snapping turned off, so here's a quick look at what it looks like on screen. Notice the uh, bottom of the screen there. There's a couple notes about videos I should share. The videos are coded in standard MP4 format, so there's no proprietary codec, so you don't even need any Nextbase apps or players to look at videos, and don't even have to use apps like Handbrake to recode the videos to send to an insurance adjuster like you have to do with some other dash cams out there. This makes it one of the easiest and best hands-off experiences on the market today by default. Lastly, the Nextbase 322 GW also supports a couple plug-in pieces like a rear view camera or this, a cabin view camera. I'm going to show off the cabin view camera in a separate video. Search in this channel if you're interested or check the written review on the Best Buy blog for it. For now, I'll flip back to the front-facing footage and leave the sound on for a little while too. Between three different ways to view video footage, multiple ways to film, multiple add-ons, GPS, um, satellite, emergency SOS, this is a much better option for those of you seeking a very advanced dash cam over some of what's out there. This is the first dash cam I've seen that actually films in 1080p at 60 frames a second. And uh, it only gets better. There are more advanced models in the 322 GW, and you'll see some reviews of the 422 and the 522 as days go by. But in the meantime, this is the next base 322 GW. Stand by for a uh, second video for this, the cabin view camera. My name is Matt. Thanks for watching the review. Uh, subscribe and keep checking back for more of these next base reviews, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.